Hello, welcome to the Thursday, April 19th, 2018 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from San Francisco, California. Just to give you a quick rundown of the five attacks that we talked today on our panel with Alan, Ed and James, the first two attacks that Ed presented on were first of all how cloud vulnerabilities are being used to steal your data, things like exposed S3 buckets and passwords left in GitHub repositories. Also Ed talked about how large large data sets can be correlated with each other. So if you are leaking some data that you yourself don't really consider all that significant, it could be correlated with data from other breaches to actually, for example, identify users. Myself, I talked about crypto coin miners. If you listen to this podcast, you probably know already that this is one of my favorite topics. And then also hardware flaws. James, he was filling in for Mike Santi, and he talked about how recent attacks against industrial control systems did focus on safety devices. A more detailed explanation of uh, these threats you can find at sans.org slash five. That's just the number five. But well, even during RSA, we still have new threats and findings to talk about. First of all, on the Internet Storm Center, we have Xavier who found a new web shell on Pastebin. This web shell isn't so far significant in that it offers a list of uh, pre-written commands that you can easily launch using that web shell that find files like for example writable directories and such that may be interesting for further exploitation. And Symantec today here at RSA presented about an attack that they're calling trust jacking. Trust jacking affects iOS and what it really refers to is the fact that once you trust a computer and allow an iPhone to sync with that computer, that trust relationship really remains indefinitely. And anybody with access to the computer could retrieve data from the iPhone as long as the iPhone is reachable from that computer, for example, via a VPN or a common Wi-Fi connection. Now, while this is certainly a possible problem, I think Symantec tries to make this a little bit a bigger deal than it is because first you have to sync and trust the particular computer. Now, existing trust relationships probably could be exploited this way if I am able to gain a foothold on a computer that is already trusted, then I can use this computer to also then attack any connected phones. Apple did fix part of the problem. It made it now a little bit more difficult to actually do the initial connection. You have to enter the phone's passcode in order to set up the trust relationship. However, they didn't really do anything about the persistence of this trust relationship. You can untrust computers if you're going into your iPhone's settings. Now, the reason that there is no additional prompt after the initial trust relationship establishment is that you do want to have backups and the like happen without user interaction. The next issue probably falls into the category of things that Facebook does that shouldn't really surprise anybody, but still appear to be somewhat odd and unusual. In this particular case, the problem is actually not so much with Facebook itself, but with websites that are using login with Facebook. This is a popular feature that can be used to log into arbitrary websites using your Facebook credentials. Now, you never enter your credentials into that third party website. Instead, you only enter them in Facebook and then Facebook is passing your user ID and additional data that you grant access to, to the website that you're trying to log into. Now, that website now is of course pretty much able to do whatever it wants with your data and apparently some websites have JavaScript on their login pages that will then pass data being passed from Facebook to advertisers. 
Now, login for Facebook will ask you for permission to pass the data on to the website, but of course, you only expect the data to be passed to the website that you log into, not to any third party advertisers. The researchers posting about this identified seven different companies who apparently are publishing JavaScript to accomplish this. This JavaScript has been found on several hundred websites among the top 1 million websites according to Alexa. Quick fix here, of course, is not to use login via Facebook. Not sure actually what Facebook itself can do in this case, because Facebook only passes the data to the website that you're logging into. You gave Facebook permission to do so. The violation here is really the website that uses login with Facebook, not so much Facebook itself. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.